So last night, I have an all-star panel with me today, but mostly Chinea Gumake yeah, is like the real, like the real all-star. All -star, the one. I love you. You guys are my all-stars. Yeah, so. that doesn't count. All right, Chinea Gumake, two-time WNBA all-star, <laughs> and then there's Richard Jefferson and Kendrick Perkins. Zach Lowe will join us shortly, as well as Adrian Wojnarowski, who will provide an update on your favorite subject, Richard, Ben Simmons. Oh, yeah. But, awesome. Yeah. More updates on that there's no updates. <laughs> there are updates. Yeah, Richard Jefferson, we, but update we have today. to start with Simmons' teammate. Joel Embiid Woo. because he was one of the big Ooh. men who was balling last night. Shout out Swagoo. So let's go to Philadelphia because Anthony Davis facing off against Joel Embiid and the 76ers. No LeBron James for Los Angeles last night. Embiid and Davis, they went at each other all night. So early in the first quarter, Joel Embiid, he gets it started off. But Anthony Davis was actually balling, though. This was the Anthony Davis that everybody has been waiting for. Yes, they did not win. Yes, Philadelphia uh, Philadelphia beat the Lakers. But ultimately, when you look at, and first of all, Anthony Davis, he sprained his wrist, but he showed back up. But Anthony Davis was different last night. I told you he was going to be different. I oh. told you this the other day. Okay, well, that's good. But I don't want somebody to tell me. I want him to show me. Well, you know, okay. Davis was different. Joel Embiid was different oh. last night. Look at that. Going up against AD right Right there That's for the zone. Daddy ball. Oh, and then we go ahead to the fourth quarter. Did you say daddy ball? Yeah. Nah, I, I, don't, I don't know ball. what that means. I'll tell okay. you. I explain. Is that daddy ball? Daddy ball is just when you just punish somebody in the paint. Well, yeah. Joel Embiid was punishing folks last night. Friendly shooter roll there. The Sixers win it 105 87. Joel Embiid finishes the 26 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. We knew it was going to be a tough matchup coming in, the way he's been scoring the basketball. Um, and it was fun, you know, fun to battle um, on, on both ends, you know, me guarding him, him guarding me. Anytime I get a chance to play against someone like that, you know, I always try to have fun with those matchups and, you know, unfortunately, we just couldn't get the win. I want to be considered a winner and, uh, you know, I also want to be considered probably the most skilled player ever, uh, especially for my size, uh, you know, seven two. 600 pounds, so, you know, so I want to be able to, you know, be in that category. You think you're changing a lot of people's mindset about you. Seven shoes, you know, 300 pounds. 600. 600. <laughs> Um, Richard, 7'2", 600 pounds. He's like, no, I'm a big boy. Maybe that's daddy. That's that daddy energy that we know Joel Bede is already is. Now, he's led the Sixers in scoring for 19 straight games, and this is what I love. He's getting to a spot. Watch this. This is the matchup versus Anthony Davis. He's showing people the ball. The help side comes. There's a double team, but guess what? That's, that's big man bully ball right there with that the is. dunk and the finish. That is. That's why he's been really inserting himself right into the MVP conversation. Look at where he gets the ball outside of three, and then instead his teammate passes. And I love this right here. Yeah, As close I, players, no, wait, that, you wait ball. for it, and then you duck in. So you duck in. Catch him sleeping. And he's caught the entire NBA sleeping, Joel Embiid, and that's why Philly looks really good, even though they're missing Ben Simmons. Well, look, this is my thing about, about Joel Embiid. About two years ago, everybody was like, he's shooting too many threes. He's too many too, shooting too many threes. That needs to be an addition to his game. He has been dominating. Career high three-point percentage yes, this year. Yes, he has been dominating the that paint. Part. He's been working inside out. And now roll the tape on the guy, Anthony Davis. I have been critical of AD mm -hmm. a lot. But this is the AD that you want. Look, taking your time. You're going against a bigger, stronger guy. But what you do, you use your quickness, Speed. You use your agility, you use your athleticism. Here, he's taking his time. He doesn't have the lob. What does he do? He tries to box out. He keeps working the post, keeps working the post. And then, look, he gets it against Tobias. Ooh. This is not a settle. When you got two defenders and Joel Embiid down there, that is not a settle of a jump shot. That is a great jump shot. Then here, one-on-one -on -one against Joel Embiid, a guy to MVP candidate. This, for me, is big. You block him. We saw Giannis have 47 against AD, and AD had 18. This was more of a battle. This is more how you take the challenge so against the So, it's a handshake. Both guys were balling. Both guys were balling, but today, that what I saw last night, it was more impressive on the Anthony Davis tip, because if the Lakers get this Anthony Davis, mm. the Anthony Davis that showed up here, Winds that, are coming. that looked like the bubble Anthony Davis, and it's going to be an absolute problem. But then on the other side of the ball, you have Danny Green saying that Joel Embiid is Shaquille O'Neal with footwork, Big Perk. So, uh, when and you're touch, looking, and touch, touch. Yeah. the horrible <laughs> well, yes, when you're looking on compared. and off of the court, Big Perk, what is the biggest difference that you see between Anthony Davis and Joel Embiid? 
it's the mindset. Like, I always go back to I want to hear what guys have to say, and then I want to see guys back it up. You heard Joel and B uh, yesterday, last night. He talked about how I want to be one of the most skilled guys ever. Like, he want to be put in that category. And, yes, he barked loud. Oh, God. Arr, arr. Don't stop. That's not, wait, that's not loud a, enough. But, but he has a hard <laughs> bite. He has a hard bite, and he's backing it up. Every single year, he has improved offensively on his game. And this is why I say when we look at him right now, he has zero flaws. None. None whatsoever. But the difference between him and A.D., is the mentality, the mentality. Remember, they booed Joel and B in Philly at one point in time. Those boos turned into cheers. Okay, but you mentioned about how every year he gets better Joel and beat offensively. Every year he also gets healthier mm -hmm. and he starts to know his body more. And I'll say this, you know, as an athlete that myself is 29, um, you know, 29. you start to say at 25, you know what I'm saying? You start realizing, oh, what, you got shade in me? Okay, just because you're in your higher 30s, it's okay. <laughs> you know, um, when you have an athlete that you're coming to your late 20s, you start realizing, okay, this diet works for me, this health cycle, uh, this exercise. And I think Joel and beat slowly as master that they're both mad at me. I didn't. I didn't say a word. I was oh, just. Fat. I, who said it was a Richard? Laptop today. Okay. Are you lower thirty? That, there is nothing on this laptop. <laughs> there is nothing on this laptop. It's kind of yeah, like glasses. So, so they just want to laugh. It's yours. <laughs> yeah. Anyone? But this is my point. Yes, Joel Embiid, we know who he is. Going into that game, the way he's performed the last couple of years, the last month and a half, there has not been any... I was not watching Joel Embiid last night. Yeah. I knew what I was going to get. I was watching one person, and I was watching Anthony Davis, and Anthony Davis was just... It was impressive. The blocking of shots, the running, the one-on-one -on -one challenges. Like I said up there, we saw a one-on-one -on -one challenge with him versus Giannis about a month and a half ago, 47 to 18. This was Anthony Davis saying, like, look... It's me, it's you, it's Giannis, and, it, and it's, and it's uh, Embiid. Those are the four big men that we should talk about, and he is on the outside looking into this group, but that performance puts him right back in that same class. I don't know if you guys caught it, but Joel Embiid, you know, he got that nice move, dunked on him, mm -hmm. but then when he came back, he tapped him on the back. Yeah. Like, those are the yeah. things you see as hoopers, like, oh, we're battling right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it was a quick respect because you knew that it was an even, you know, type of game. So I was like, oh, I like this. But we, this is how it should be. We haven't seen that performance, that intensity. Yeah. From, from AD, we've seen it with Giannis because he's got two MVPs. We've seen it with Joker because he's got an MVP. We're seeing it now with and Joel. we've seen it with Joel over the last couple of years. The one person in the last three years that we haven't seen it consistently from is Anthony Davis, but last night was a step in the right direction. Well, and that's been the criticism of his game. I do want to stay in Philadelphia here, though, everybody, because with seven minutes left in the game last night, Carmelo Anthony, he confronted a fan standing behind the row of courtside seats near center court at Wells Fargo Center. And Anthony said that the fan referred to him as, quote, Boy, a word that carries a serious racially charged undertone when used in a specific way. So here was Carmelo Anthony last night after the game. There's just certain things you don't bring to any type of sporting event. There's just certain things you don't say to anybody. Uh, if I was outside and I bumped into you and you said that said those things to me, then it would be a totally different story. So, uh, but again, I'm, it's, it's, it's out of my hands now. So however, however, they, however way they want to play it, they can play it. Joining me now is Lakers reporter Dave McMenamin. So, Dave, you were at Wells Fargo Center last night, and we just heard Carmelo say that it's out of his hands. So whose hands is it in now? Well, Malika, it's not actually even in the Philadelphia 76ers' hands. A Sixers spokesman told me that they leased the building from Wells Fargo. And so Wells Fargo Center Security will be in charge of any further discipline. Um, you know, the, the Sixers spokesman told me that only one person was ejected from the game, and Carmelo, speaking to me and several other reporters, said there were several fans that were directing this charge type of language towards him. Actually, there was one, after it seemed like the incident had dissipated, one sitting courtside was getting into it with Carmelo, and Joel Embiid actually came over to intercept a Philadelphia fan, he was taking the side of the Los Angeles Lakers player. But I followed up with the security team from Wells Fargo Center, and I have yet to receive a response. Okay, so as for the Lakers, they're back at it tonight on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern when they play Charlotte, and they might be without all three of their big three. What else can you tell us? Yeah, well, so it, they are listed as questionable, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. You also have Avery Bradley listed as questionable and Malik Monk out. 
Uh, but a team source tells me that it's more going to be a game time decision for that group. Now, yesterday, it was a surprise to a lot of us covering the team when LeBron James, who was on such a hot scoring streak, was dashed from the lineup. But a source told me then when I asked, is this something we got to be worried about? His explanation was year 19. And so to me, it was more of a rest and maintenance issue. Mm. LeBron James will test out his body tonight, see how that left knee feels. Same thing for Anthony Davis with his left knee uh, and Russell Westbrook with his right knee. And as you mentioned, all three of those guys officially listed as questionable. We'll see a little closer to game time what actually ends up happening and who is available. Dave McMenamin, thank you so much. The Splash Brothers, they absolutely lived up to their moniker last night. So let's go to the Bay Area. Yay, the Splash area. Brothers and the Warriors hosting the Timberwolves last night tonight. I mean, look at that transition pull up three. That's easy money. But you know what's crazy? We've got these guys back. Stuff to Clay, brotherly love on the family. Both Steph and Clay had two threes in the first half. Well, and they were feeding off of each other all night, and it didn't slow in the third quarter. The Warriors oh. up by two here. Circus shots are just layups to him, but America, you're you're lucky because you got both in one right there. <laughs> Look at that circus, off, yeah, off the glass. It's beautiful. Dun 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 dun. Well, Get him. and then he does it again. Oh, here. this one's face like ah, screw it, I'll just shoot it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but that's cool, Steph range. It is. Yeah. But just look at there's like nine people. Like around. what? Like, ah, whatever. And he starts walking back. Gotta love it. Well, so the Warriors, they're up by 14 at the end of the third quarter. And then we're heading to the fourth, doing what they do. Andrew Wiggins kicks it to Clay, drills a three. Clay had 23 points. Curry had 29. And the Warriors win it. These last two games, I think, are a really good indicator of what our team can look like with Clay back. Wiggins outside. It's in three. Can you feel it out on the court now? Everyone's starting to gel a little bit more. Oh, yeah. We thought we were going to play like this my first game back. Maybe I did, and I was a little naive, but we didn't even get to practice much because I was rehabbing the first third of the season, and it's going to get better every night. And uh, when our full squad is back, it's going to be real scary. Really excited for that day. So last night, Clay set a season high in points and made threes. And for the 36th time in their career, Steph and Clay both made five three pointers. At least that's by far the most such games in NBA history because no other teammates have done that more than 20 times. And it felt like one of those classic Splash Brothers type of nights. And Perk, the more impressive night to you was from Clay or from Steph? <clears throat> it was from Steph. I mean, because it, w it wasn't what he did, it was how he did it and the timing of it. It was like every time Minnesota was trying to make a run or they was getting some momentum, all of a sudden Steph Curry happened. Whether it was that circus layup, circus shot layup, whether it was a pull up from the mid range or a pull up from the three, those, those shots he hit were killers to the, uh, to the Minnesota Timberwolves. So I got to go with Steph Curry. I'd have to agree, Big Perk, just because you're right. Steph Curry, his greatest strength is that he takes the joy away from his opponents with his shot. And going six for 10 from three, that's good, especially given how the last few games have been going. But I also like the fact that the Splash Brothers, right, the Splash Brothers, they look like they were back. I mean, having an efficient game from Clay, and more importantly, Clay coming off of a season high minutes, delivering in, you know another game alongside Steph, I think it was a combination of so many great things. No, you, you cannot. Wait, wait. wait. Yeah, she, 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 yeah, she said, she said, Steph. And every, Thank you. I said I agree with you, Big Perk. Absolutely Bert. wrong. We know who <laughs> Steph is. We have not watched, stopped watching Steph for the last two years. We watched Steph have an historic year last year, do all this thing. There is one question on the Golden State Warriors, and that is, can, uh, can Clay Thompson get back to the level that he's been at before? So then when you see him performing at the level he's been at before, that is why that was the most important thing for him. And on top of it, the fact that he was doing it while his, his splash brother was playing well, that's what makes Clay and his performance last night so much more impressive because you're like, oh, he's starting to figure it out. This is going to be a problem because we know what Steph's going to do. That, that's not, a, that's I mean, not even Steph, unique Steph to see Steph that. for the last month. Bro. Yeah, yes, but, but he's also been on fire for the last decade. Uh, so he's allowed a month to like shoot the ball. Ding, ding, ding. Point Richard. We'll talk about oh, minus two years. Well, it, it does feel though like every time when we're talking about Steph Curry, it's sort of like, well, he's going to figure it out at some point. Versus Clay Thompson, it was more a more macro question of what's he going to look like after injury? Is this mm -hmm. his breakout game? So I want to bring in senior writer Zach Lowe into this conversation because Zach, you were impressed with how Clay and Steph work together. What did you see there? 
There you go. We don't have to pit them against each other. They're teammates. And the coolest thing about last night was they're starting to get their rhythm and how they play together and how they screen for each other off the ball. And that kind of stuff that I noticed from that game, that's the kind of stuff that should terrify the rest of the league is when you got the two best shooters in history screening for each other. Look at the little back screen right there. Steph for Clay. Carl Anthony Towns has to dip down. Boom, run Steph off Carl Towns' guy. There's no answer for that. And here they just run in the general vicinity of each other. Everyone goes after Steph. Hey, that's Clay Thompson getting an uncontested layup. Here they go again, working off the ball. Steph pinned down for Clay. Uh, where do we go? What's going on? Oh, God, I got another layup for Clay because of the panic that Steph generates. It's not just two guys screening for each other. It's not just Steph and another guy screening for each other. It's the two greatest shooters ever getting that rhythm back, getting that cooperative rhythm back. And the more they do it, the better they get. Watch out because these guys are coming in. And I got to say, I agree with RJ because to me, we know what Steph is. Slump, schmump. We don't got to worry about Steph slumping. Clay looking this good this soon after almost three years away is really, really incredible. Why is that agreeing with, didn't I? No, he was, uh, first First of all, I, Zach, thank you. Thank you for bringing <laughs> some honesty to the to this broadcast because these two, I don't know what they were. Whoa. Passionate. The last thing I will say about what Zach said, which is very, very true. We talk about how much Steph is an offense amongst himself. His movement creates confusion and allows other players to get buckets. Now you have two of those guys because Clay moves almost as much as Steph. But now with that confusion, it's going to allow for open shots for Steph because you're <clears throat> focused on clay then all of a sudden what happens Steph starts to get out of his slump because he's actually getting a little bit better looks and now those difficult shots become a little bit easier so basically Richard when I move you move right just like that he still misses it. <laughs> he still misses one it. One day he's going to, but that was the sentiment of Anthony Edwards after yeah. the game right was okay when there's just one <laughs> you can figure it out when there's two all of a sudden Starting looking a little cross-eyed. Well, where do you go? Where do you go? Why? Out yesterday, period, on yeah. the defensive end or offense. <laughs> While still to come on NBA Insider, Adrian Wojnarowski reported that the Sacramento Kings are now out of the Simmons sweepstakes. So Woj is joining us now. Adrian, what does Sacramento being out of the mix mean for Simmons' Simmons's future with the Sixers? Well, Malika, Sacramento was the team that between now and the trade deadline, there might have been. <clears throat> And it wouldn't have been easy given the Sixers asking price, but the, it might have been the one team where there could have been a one-to-one -one trade where they wouldn't have needed multiple teams to do a deal. But the asking price for Sacramento is too high. Hmm. And now we're within two weeks of the trade deadline. And you know, Sacramento has been telling teams yesterday, today, we are engaged with you on doing a deal. We are not pursuing Ben Simmons anymore. They don't believe that that asking price is going to come down from Philly, or even if it does come down, that it would come down far enough for a deal that made sense for the Kings. And for Philadelphia now, I think they're still engaged with teams. I think they will be engaged until the deadline uh, next uh, February 10th. But listen, they're still looking at the offseason, and certainly we know the player that they would love to be able to get. That's James Harden. But it's not James Harden or bust for Philly. And I think what Philly hopes... And what history shows you is more great players, more high-level players will become available in the offseason because teams will flame out in the playoffs. Players will be unhappy. Yeah. People will ask for trades or teams will want to break up groups. And that will allow for, I think, a, a bigger pool of players for the, for the Sixers to try to find a deal for Ben Simmons. But for now, Sacramento is out. That's a team that wants to reshape their roster. They want to do deals. You know, they have very some desirable players and assets in Harrison Barnes uh, and others in Sacramento, and they're going to look elsewhere now to try to do a deal or deals between now and the deadline. Okay, so if the Kings join the list of teams who are out on Ben Simmons, then, then who's in on him? Well, listen, I think there's, there's no shortage of teams who would like Ben Simmons on their roster. But the list of teams who are willing mm. to meet the Sixers price or even really engage with the Sixers now uh, is shorter. And I think, you know, there are teams like, you know, Atlanta, you know, they have, you know, certainly interest in him. There, there, there are a number of others. Minnesota has interest. But is there a pathway to a deal? And I think, you know, that's the hard part for the Sixers right now is how far are they going to have to lower their asking price? to get a deal done at the deadline. And for Philadelphia, 
listen, they have the support internally, ownership, even Joel Embiid and understanding, and we've talked about this a lot, that if they do a deal that doesn't bring back a package that allows them to compete for a championship, it doesn't make any sense. Not with Ben Simmons signed for years forward, but we certainly understand the pressure because of the way Embiid's playing. This is a team, 10 games, uh, you know, 29 and 19, I think, as we speak today, just two games out of first place in the East. And I think there's always still going to be the hope that they get past the trade deadline and somehow they can convince Ben Simmons to <clears> return <throat> and play for this team. He has been adamant that that's not going to happen. I don't think it's an expectation that it's going to happen, but it is still a hope in Philly. Uh, but right now, listen, I think they need to be prepared that he's going to sit out the season and he needs to be prepared for the fact that uh, they may not find a trade for him until at least the summer. You mentioned the deadline, Woj. We will have much more on Ben Simmons as we approach that February 10th deadline. Thank you so much for joining us today, yeah. Adrian. I, I want everyone to take a, a, a close look at this. Check this out. Do you do you notice anything wrong with this picture? Right, that, that's Dr. J, yeah. Philly legend, wasn't ready Hall of Famer. Question. In Philadelphia, they spelled his last name wrong. So that, that brings us to Mr. Richard Jefferson, I guess. Look, I don't care. Anybody can get it. Even know how to spell care. Dr. J's name right. Just put Dr. J. Everybody right? knows. Don't spell his name wrong. <laughs> but that's, you know what that's going to bring us? To that's rich, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Hey. 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 You, you, you need some assistance? Want, no, because you blocked Richard, me out of the Richard, camera. Richard, you want me to come? I would love for you to come. Oh, my God. Thank you, please. Richard. Now, look, this is the thing. Somehow, some way, we still have so much more to come, but this right here is where we are going to focus. Ladies and gentlemen, roll the tape, because this is what La That's Rich is about. It's about having fun. And some players, look, yes. Devin Booker with oh. the left-hand windmill. Never seen it. Don't try it. Never seen it. It happens. Even the kids are loving. Look, the lefty windmill book. Oh, man, you know what? It happens. E it for effort. A for effort. Yeah, I just, I've never seen it. It's still a present. It's a, and he look, can smile it. About That's it. cool. Because you know he's one of the baddest men. And then again, mm -hmm. Austin Reeves, we've seen it. We know. <laughs> this is what you do. You shoot a little floater. Life is good. Bron's talking to him. And Bron said, hey, listen. <laughs> Definitely don't do anything I wouldn't do <laughs> and don't do anything I would do. That's where you live, somewhere in that gray and don't area. Do anything. And Austin Reeves is like, oh, okay, man, man, that's next level. Whatever you talk about, I get it. But Dennis Smith Jr., one of the most athletic guys that this league has seen. Young guard, got a lot of bounce. Let's see what Dennis Smith Jr. Okay. got for it. Okay, he's, he's handling. He's a slam dunk he's machine. Painting. Oh, man, pick and roll is coming. But oh, unfortunately, oh, that's noggin. going to be very, very tough. First of all, look at this. Look at this. Oh, -wee. this is the only thing that makes me want to play basketball. This is the only thing that makes me wish that Perk was still on my team so I could accidentally do that to his. Head. Has that happened but to you, Richard? Has that, no, 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 no. I'm better than that. That's that's what it is. But like, we don't. If you ever show up on that's rich, just know. We love you. We do. It's no, it's no harm, but we've all been there. Chanae? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been there, but I still love it. <laughs> oh, we're going to get some clay. To the minute she says she's never been there, we're going to get some clips, okay? So. Since the league changed the game's <laughs> format, and he's joined by Steph Jokic, Andrew Wiggins, and Ja Morant. And then Ja, he found out that he became an all-star with his family. So he tweeted, enjoy the announcement with the two movie. people I wanted to be with, <laughs> Franny and That's Grandma. I love that. So a whole lot to unpack here. I also love that folks were concerned. Oh, is LeBron, is he going to be when the first <laughs> voter returns came back? And that was nothing to worry about. So, Chanae, I want to start with you. What was your biggest takeaway from the All-Star starters being announced? I was surprised, and it's very rare that we see a team that is number one in the league, 38 and nine, not have a starter named to the All-Star game starters. I was surprised at that fact. And to me, Chris Paul comes to mind. This is year 17 for Chris Paul. What, Perk, what's your problem? Go ahead and finish. Okay, thank you. This is year 17 for Chris Paul. Uh, his team, you know, he's led them to the best record. Obviously, Devin Booker has a lot to say about their success. And DeAndre, eight and two. But when I look at the starters, I was like, oh, it just seems strange that you can have the best record in the NBA and not have a player represented. As a starter, mind you, we all know it's the fan vote, too. Yeah, but I actually had a vote, too. You know, my first time. Congratulations. And here's the thing. I have zero complaints about both sides. Here's why. If you, if you, I understand everybody's frustrated in Phoenix and, you know, about Chris Paul and Devin Booker. 
but they put, they're guards. You're not taking out Steph, and you damn sure ain't taking out Ja. Okay, so everybody's upset about Andrew Wiggins. Well, he's a wing player. Yeah. If Anthony Davis was healthy, he might not be there, but God damn it, he's there. Okay, so, and I'm proud of him. When you go to the East, I have no problem with the East. I like Trey Young. I love Joel and B, Giannis, KD, DeMar. I mean, to me, this is the first time that the fans actually got it right. No, I have no problem yeah, with you it. Got a problem no, because wait, you wait, I don't have a problem. I just was surprised just that bought, the team that's you, best in the record doesn't just, have a starter. Okay, but it's not a problem. It it's an up. educated point. You just bought it up, boo, boo. <laughs> At least I'm your boo. I do want to know how closely your ballot was reflected with the, the starters that we saw. Well, I was too off. I was too off. Okay. And in, in the West, I put, I actually put Jokic as in uh, Rudy Gobert in there instead of Andrew Wiggins. Okay. Okay, I was off on that part. And then the East, in the East, I had DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine starting, and I didn't have Trey Young starting. Okay. Because of their record at the time. All right. They went on the unit. Well, we're, we're already there. We're already going to snub. So I do want to bring back Zach Lowe into this discussion do because Zach. Yes, yes, I'm we do like have to. I am delighted to. I want to know no what problem. Zach's biggest snub was. Who Come Zach's biggest snub was. Come on, Zach. Hey, Zach. Well, per <laughs> Perk's not the only one that had a ballot. I had a ballot, too. And I had nine out of the ten, and the one that I didn't have was Andrew Wiggins. And apologies to Andrew Wiggins. He doesn't deserve to be an all-star starter. No shame in that. And Perk, I can't believe it. How do you say his name? Rudy Gobar? Rudy, 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 Rudy Gobert is the biggest snub. Rudy Gobert absolutely deserved the other front court spot in Wiggins' place. I don't care that he's a center just like Jokic. It's his, the all-star game. Let's just have fun. It should have been Rudy Gobert, and it wasn't Rudy Gobert. And Perk's right. I'd love to have a son in there. Both those guards are going to make it, but I can't take out Stefan. I can't take out Moran. So it's Rudy Gobar is the biggest slump. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a whole new pronunciation. No, let's not start that. Look, look, I agree with everybody. And to your point, Perk, when you say, look, we got front court, we got back court, they actually took away the center spot of, what yep. was it, a decade or so ago because they felt like players were getting in, so they tweaked it. Look, Andrew Wiggins has been putting in work. He's been doing it. The fans voted a lot. I have a large portion 50%. of 50%. Uh, 50%. So if that gets him halfway there, good for him. Understand, too, no Kawhi Leonard. No, Paul George has been banged up this year. So when you start looking at those, at those front court players, there's limited options. But you're right. But you can't take out the backcourt people that are agreed. There. That's but, just the, that. Look, that's not on uh, us. But it's not how you start; it's how you finish. Both of those guys still will probably get voted in as reserve. Yes, they will be. You know what I mean? But I'm just so surprised they didn't easy. have a starter. But I know why they. You know. You know who I'm now watching to you know, see if they get in as a know. reserve Please. is is Tyler Hero. <laughs> because if we're going to talk about the West and sure. who's at the top of those standings, we also need to take a look at the East. Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler maybe haven't played enough games to mm. be voted in, and at yeah. the beginning of the season. Tyler Hero, a lot of folks said, wow, he's talking a little big right now, but his game has backed it up so far. So who is going to be the Miami Heat representation if they get any? And they absolutely should. There but I'm surprised Perk didn't lean all the way in on this. I, I do want to lean in. Tyler <laughs> Hero gets in. Tyler, <laughs> oh, oh I, I wasn't even talking about Tyler uh, Hero uh, leaning in on Tyler Hero. I was talking about the fact that anybody who watches this show with any regularity knows that we are your home for Grizzlies and John Morant-related content. But even our minds, they can't fully parse out the physics behind Jaws highlight real plays. <laughs> so we had to enlist. In fact, we estimate Morant's block radius to be 3,500 cubic feet. That's the same block radius as center Clint Capella, who's seven inches taller. Now the key to Morant's athleticism lies in the explosive muscles of his lower body. See, during the propulsion phase of a vertical jump, your body relies on a quick burst of energy generated by the thick fibers called fast twitch muscles. And Morant is able to use these powerful fibers to generate enough vertical momentum to launch himself at over 20 miles per hour. That's actually on par with the takeoff speed attained by Olympic long jumpers. Now, once he's airborne, Moran can tap into his elite level of body control thanks to sensory cells in his muscles called proprioceptors. These neural navigators send information to the central nervous system, allowing Morant's brain to map out his body in space. This is a huge reason why he can spin 360 degrees and lay it in while only having visual contact with the hoop for just three tenths of a second. Spins off, Hill and scores! But what we really want to know 
is what's the farthest distance Morant can throw one down from? Well, if like a long jumper, Morant measures his steps back from his launch point, he can maximize his takeoff speed to almost 21 miles per hour. Factor in the 10 and a half foot apex of his trajectory, as well as his lengthy six foot seven wingspan. And we believe that Morant can flush it from 16 feet out. That's a foot beyond the free throw line. All this to say, someone needs to convince this man to sign up for the NBA slam dunk contest. Until then, We'll just have to settle for Morant's explosive in-game jaw drop. Morant with a running start. Oh! I, I feel like I just have to just hand over the floor to the dark side president coming off of that piece. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to stand on the table or lay on the table. Yeah, I actually great. had that in my, th in my thoughts. But here's the thing. He's not done. He's not done. The Memphis Grizzlies right now have the third best record in the NBA, okay? So they're steady climbing up the charts. Okay, this is just the beginning because we don't know what's going to happen at the end of the season. I'm talking about individually, I'm talking about the MVP. Oh, well, look, look, the one thing that I will say is that his athleticism and his attack, it reminds me very similar to when Derrick Rose won the MVP. Mm. When Derrick Rose won the MVP, he was like, Yes, he was a guard, but the way he attacked the paint, the physicality, the approach to everything that he was doing was next level. If you're going to talk about a young player winning the MVP with the style of play that Ja, you can point to it. It's been done. It's been done. It was done by uh, Derrick Rose. So I could see him finishing, but he's going to have to finish strong to separate himself. Do you think he's the front runner right now? Today? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh Thank my you. gosh, today he says, all right, coming up on NBA Today, a battle of the backcourts, mm. the Nets versus the Warriors. Ooh. Who will come out to play more NBA Today coming up after the break? Is Kyrie playing? Shout out to our issue, producer, right? Slick I'm Nick, sorry. who brought that piece to life. Now your girl is here with a cheat sheet to get you ready for Saturday night with a breakdown. Let's go. So this is a matchup of some of the best backcourts in the NBA. Let's start with Brooklyn. Here's what you need to know. When James Harden and Kyrie Irving have played without Kevin Durant, their record is 18-5. and five. That's basically on pace for a 64-win season. Not too shabby. So this duo still finds ways to win without the current leading scorer in the NBA KD. Must be nice, huh? Now, what does that look like on the court? Well, these guards, they want to get to the rim. So run me my tape, producer Quake Hoop, baby. Here we go, a nice little misdirection action between Kyrie and James to get the one-on-one -on -one at the top of the key. Now, without Kyrie and without KD, normally James Harden with this space, he shoots the ball, but instead he has the vision to see Kyrie. Kyrie uses that quick first step and gets to the rim. Now let's talk a little bit about in transition. Kyrie, point guard, gets the ball. This is how much attention Kyrie attracts. Four defenders in the paint, but the great thing here is that he's patient. James always wants to get the rim, get a foul call. That's exactly Brooklyn backcourt basketball. Now to Golden State. The Splash Brothers, they are back. Steph and Clay, these guards right here, you know what it is. They want to get threes, and this is wild. These two guys combined, account for all of these records. Most threes in a game, in a season, in a career, in a postseason career. Most consecutive games with a three. Most career threes in the finals. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Honestly, I'm getting tired of listing it, so why don't we show you this on the tape? All right, Warriors, fifth in fast break points. And look, when you have your blind spot as a defender, guess what, you miss a dangerous shooter and Klay Thompson in transition. That's flash, that's cash money. Now I love this play right here because it involves both of them doing what they need to do best. Screen, a nice little back screen action. Klay could have had a layup, but instead two for three. Threes are better. So honestly, you just have to get your popcorn ready for this one, y'all, because uh, California is going crazy this weekend. We've got the NFC Championship. Yeah. But basketball fans, we know we got to turn up for the battle in the we Bay, know. okay? I'm disappointed that you didn't come back Hopping like Steph did down the side. Oh, yeah, like, hey, or should I gritty? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, exactly. You're a little bit like that. All right. Most important backcourt quickly in this game is who, Perk? Uh, this, I mean, look, I thought we were talking about most important player. All right, then take, tell me the I most important told. player. I'm, I'm, I'm going with Patty Mills. Producer Perk. All right. I'm, uh, no, I'm going with Patty Mills. Oh. I'm going with Patty Mills okay. for the simple fact 